Come on, Circle. Let's see you disappear. Hello. Good afternoon. Sunday, July 19th, 2020. Uh, down here back in the basement. It's hot outside. Uh, in the 90s, middle of July. Not too humid. Not too really bad. I mean, it's stepping outside. You don't, you don't get goosebumps. Glasses fog up a little. Just like they do when you walk inside from winter. So with the humidity, you got the moisture that can collect on your cool, chilled, air-conditioned glasses. Um, so yeah, uh, avoiding the heat for now. Got to move along later. Uh, got to do some cleaning upstairs. But other people are napping, so I'm down here in the cool confines of my basement. So, got a big box here. I'll show you the scholastic. It's a scholastic box, which is huge. Um, big white box. Got a few of these. They're nice. They uh, hold six by nine books pretty good. You know, your classic scholastic hardcovers. Uh, but also the oversized books, the magazine size, which we'll see in a moment in here. I think most of this is big. Um, they got some other cool stuff in here. So let's start. As you saw in the, in the uh, first of all, Village Voice. Spidey exits New York City forever? Let's see. Ah, uh, Jan, our music world. This is January 9th through 15th, 2013. So Jan, our music world still has that. It is still at it. Moving it. Assassination of a Superhero. Spider-Man is gone and Mary Jane might never be the same by Alan... Schnerstuhl, page 13. What's the lead, I wonder? Also, the Village Voice is no more, unfortunately. I think they might still have an online presence, but long gone from the streets of New York. Dan slot faces his fans, plus Spidey's New York. Oh, yeah, this is about uh, Doc Ock. Spoilers. Doc Ock takes over Peter Parker's body. He tries to become a better Spider-Man than Spider-Man. You didn't see that coming, did you? It's pretty good. Uh, and then there's various tear sheets. Gay City News. Pomo Forty, a more lethal than Kryptonite. Page 18. Sorry, that's all I got. So I don't know what's on page 18. Just let the cover. Uh, various comics strips. These are daily comics from again 2012. Daily News took them a while to go to color. The what was that long on paper? Newsday. They did it years ago, almost decades ago. And of course, St. Louis Post Dispatch has done it. At least it's the 70s. I don't know when they got color. February 10th, 2012. On uh, here you have Jumpstart, Hagar the Horrible, Mother Goose and Grimm, One Big Happy, Doonesbury, Red Rover, Between the Lines, and Argyle Sweater, plus a Sudoku. And also from the Daily News, circa June 6, 2013, circa, exactly, page five to be exact. Comic-Con, Wizard World, New York City Experience. This was a little, mostly a dealer show they held over on the waterfront down where the subway doesn't run. Nice walk. June 12th, excuse me, June 28th and 29th, 2013. Stanley's there, of course. Uh, Basketball City, Pier 36. 299 South Street, number 36. Um, got a lot of good stuff there, but boy, I have to walk. I saw a part of the city I never saw before. Jeffrey Dahmer meet Alien Dinosaur, the best comics and graphic novel of 2012 by R.C. Baker. The Village Voice. I don't know if all their stuff's been digitized. One thing I liked about The Village Voice, two things I liked about The Village Voice. When I was a kid, teenager, high school student, actually college student working at the Mop Up Live, we got The Village Voice. I was like, ah, oh, I love reading it. And in the back, they have all those ads. Can't wait to get to New York City, see all these great musical acts and these movies and all that. Get to New York. Do you think I, did I ever go to a live show in a bar? No. Oh, some good movies. 
on here is a invoice. Barnes and Noble sold to Torsten Adair. December 13th, 2014. Superheroes Never Ending Battle. So it's like this a DVD. Superheroes Cape Cowls and the Creed, blah, blah, blah. Astro City Through Open Doors, which is the first volume of the Vertigo line. Just read Astro City. Read all of it. Hopefully that new graphic novel is coming. I'm just doing original graphic novels now. But if you like super good superhero stories, one of the best comic stories of all time, one of the best superhero stories of all time, it's Astro City number one half. It's the second uh, volume collection, which I think is called Confessions. Which is him doing a Batman story. Natural City Victory and Walt Disney, Uncle Scrooge, and Donald Duck, which is probably the Fantagraphics collection. Just give me a total on here. Just tells me. Yeah. Anyway, Sunday Comics from Omaha World Herald, 2014. They're pretty much the same format today. Just write them today, it's Sunday. One broadsheet, folks. But, yes. Um, the difference is, Rumo is no longer, I don't even know, it's not longer there. So this is still on the front page. Penis is still on the front page. Baby Blues is still on the front page. I forget what's on the top now. Fort Knox, military strip, I think that's gone. Faded away, as they say. Non sequitur got replaced due to a controversy. It's now uh, uh, that's Blondie now. Vertical, vertical comics. Blondie works because all the panels are the same. A very uh, tiny Gilbert, which should be larger because of all the writing. Garfield's still there. Blondie, as I said, now is over here. Peg other horrible. Foxtrot's there now. Inside, part of the city. New artist writer. Hi, Steen. Doing a great job. Family Circus is now, I think, the body. Funky Winkerbean's still there. Flying McCoy's is still there. Wizard is still there. Duran. Dennis the Menace. Twin Friends, yes. Foxtrot. I don't even know. Pickles. Shoe. Again. The funny pages rarely change because as soon as you change something, people complain. Known fact. Every feature editor knows this story. Here is another comics page. Is this the same? Like the section of this again is, is it the same here? Copyright 2014. Yep, there we are. Oh. So, I always keep those wherever I could. Okay, mystery envelope. Oh, we bought this by mail order. Yes, I did. Let's put my address on it. So, what did I get? <sighs> Weird stuff. I don't know who I bought this from. There was some guy cleaning out, cleaning out inventory. Itchy Planet. Stories from information. Paul Cooper cover. Crisis on Finite Earth. Number one. Yeah, I should get that slab, right? Wild Animals. Scott Shaw cover. I think I got this. Well, I got this for a lot of reasons. Look at this on the back. You don't normally see Rick Gary do animals, but boy, I don't know if there's anything he can't do. Read his... Uh, read the murder series he did for MDM. James Garfield's very good. And if you like architecture, the one on Nesbitt. Crime of the Century. Yeah. I don't want to surprise that really isn't a movie. Oh, here's the Bill of Lady. Itchy Planet number three. And of course, I got tape stuck to the plastic, which is fine. Plastic, tape on plastic is fine. Unless you're going to grade the envelope. No doubt. Um, there's that. And then we have, I have just put this in there because I needed to protect it. Astro City number 19, again, from the Vertigo Run. Three ninety nine. This was a short story arc about a super superhero getting old and needing to compensate for her aging. Yeah, 
like I said, that's the type of story in Astro City. Good stuff. Not, not, uh, if nothing else, buy the original volume, the first six issue miniseries he did. That alone is good. Um, but all of it is really good. Here's the bill of lading from Oh my high comics. This story one store left, but boy. <laughs> this has six stores, now it's one. Well, that one store is now a huge, massive warehouse, which luckily they bought before the uh, what do we call it? The green boom, the green explosion. Yeah, and all the warehouses in Denver are greenhouses. Bike train, I mean, 420. Smoke me if you got them. Yep. Itchy Planet, I paid three bucks for. Itchy Planet 3, I paid 360. Wild Animals from 1982, I paid $3. All of them near Mint. For a grand total, wow. Merchandise total was 960. The shipping was $8. 1750. So, eh, not too bad. Ordered on January 2015. I'm going to throw away this plastic. I really don't need it anymore. But anyway, I don't know why. Maybe there was something about those. Okay, I'm going to do this by pile. Here we go. Again, here's that nice spot varnish I was telling you about. Let's see how that litters. This is Superman the Warriors, 1938, 1945. Reprints comics. I won't judge the color. I'll let others do that. Um, and this was Chartwell Books. It was also available to see Batman the Warriors, 3940-3945, and Wonder Woman the Warriors, 1941-1945. No price, so it might be from Britain. Oh, as I said. Ta -da -da. And Mad's lesser known cousin, Panic. You see archives, 50 bucks. This is the Dark Horse after Diamond, uh, what do they call it? Gemstone? Yeah, I think it's Gemstone. Ceased publication, or just decided to do Overstreet Price Guys. Dark Horse picked up and printed all the rest of the issues, all the rest of the other issue series. Ooh, the Will Eisner Reader, Seven Graphic Stories by a Comics Master. You see comics? Big brother, that's just the phone. Call from Center for me. New York, big city. Also by Will Eisner. These are part of DC's Will Eisner Library, which I don't think exists anymore. But for a while, they were doing a lot of reprint spirit archives. Get those. Again, that's another textbook of comic storytelling. Uh, Willies are City's People's Notebook. These, I think, are freebies probably at the office I grabbed. I have most of the stuff in hardcover. Oh, Peter Pan, adapted by Streff the Finn Clam from. This is a British import. Published by. Here we go. BC Books, imprint of Berlin Limited out of Edinburgh, 2015. Nine seven eight one seven eight zero two seven two nine zero zero. Oh, and here's an example. I think this is probably an import from across the pond, not across the pond, but across the channel, across the ditch, the moat. Oh, yeah, just call it the moat. I don't think anybody does, but we should call it the moat because for thousands of years, that's what it was. In Search of Lost Time, Swan's Way. This is a, an arc from MBM, uh, MBM, excuse me, Norton. Live right. She's doing some good graphic novel stuff. This is in black and white, of course, still. And yes, this is also an import translation. But yeah, they re I think they reprinted all of it. Ooh, if you haven't seen this cartoon, you can watch it. But before that was the cartoon, there's the books. The Black Hound, Hilda and the Black Hound. Oversized, good stuff. Netflix has the cartoon I've seen the like, first six episodes. Good, good stuff. Uh, oh, Hugh Lofting, Seymour Twast, Dr. Doolittle. 
very compressed storytelling. But in his regular style, there's quite a few of these adaptations, classic adaptations. Oh, on the side here, in a box, what do we have here? Oh, ah, the ocean at the end of the lane. New game, and deluxe signed edition. 150 smackers. That was new. Now, who knows? From Willie Morrow, 978-006-2265081. Now I'm going to carefully open this up. Slipcase, note the cover design. Et voila. There it is. I don't know what that cost. That's $150. Open this once. There it is. Number 1239. Of 2,000 copies. Sign a number of copies. So, a lot of new gaming books I have not read. Like, I'm not read. Um, but I've read enough. I don't read again. He's on my list of authors that I will read whatever they write. It's just I don't make a point to read it all. Read it all in one sitting. Advantage, whatever. You know what I mean. Oh, here's another big omnibus book. Kabuki, Kabuki. Da, 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 da. Yeah, this is a moment. 978 16 $40. Stamp David Mack. No, did I get did I buy this before the six because we got him to sign it? No, I just again I think it was lying around the office. What do you get? Lately he's best known for the variant covers he's done for Superman. After the Bendis relaunch, whatever you want to call that, rewrite. And this is creator of stuff. First two Kabuki, first two complete Kabuki volumes. Good stuff. Good, good stuff. And oh, there's more in the basement. More in the basement. More in the bottom. There's another invoice. We'll get to that in a moment. We have Cozy Simmons, Baker Cat. Lauded uh, British cartoonist, illustrator, storyteller. Oh, here's, here's something we went from Heritage Auctions. Bring it up, Father. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, I spent so much money on it. That was back in the day when I had mine. Oh, I only spent eighteen dollars for it, but the premium is fourteen dollars, so thirty-two dollars. Tax, shipping, God, eleven dollars for shipping. Here's a total of forty-six dollars. So, if you're going to win an auction, make sure you buy a lot of stuff. I don't know what's the front, what's the back, front and the back are the same. Pretty decent condition. So yeah, eighteen dollars to steal, but for forty-six total, even yeah, that's not bad. Oh. The cartoon art of Mike Diodato Jr. Red Giant, don't know what's happened to him. They had an interesting business model, but it just did not work. I think it was 10 years too late. So this is a sketchbook. Oh, James, look at that. All of one cartoonist. Go cartoony. I mean, he's known, I guess, things for... Uh, not hyper realism, but realistic artwork, superhero stuff. Oh, back to Neil Gaiman again. Crazy hair. I heard him read this before the book. You know, you do recitations, this and instructions. And again, Dave McCain doing the artwork for a kid's book. Louise Booger, a memoir, sort of. Which I grab because it's William Joyce. Great animator. I don't want to say best known. His most widely seen work. Well, he's not a lot. Roly Poly Ollie on TV. Um, Meet the Robinsons for Disney, which I actually enjoy. Um, he had a lot of problems with it. 
Academy Award winning animator. Oh, wow. And there's a book inside the book. But yeah, great, great illustrator. Um, also known for um, that feature, animated, animated feature where the holiday characters are superheroes. Guardians? Something like that. Yeah, you know, Jack Frost. Santa Claus. He did a whole series of books on those. Man of the Moon. Ooh, this looks intriguing. The Art of Cooking with Michelle, Chloe, and Mia. Chop Chop Comics. This is uh, uh, 978-0692563786. I bought it, of course, because it's a book about cooking. For example, ham and mushroom stuffed crepes. I love crepe. Crepe is so tasty. Banana bread. Two pages. Almond and raisin Danish crown. Asian chicken lettuce wraps. Crispy tilapia with mint tzatziki sauce. Say that three times fast. Tzatziki sauce, tzatziki sauce, tzatziki sauce, tzatziki sauce. Oh, and another Hilda paperback. Hilda and the Midnight Giant. Paperbacks are $11. Hardcovers, I think, are 25 This, I believe, was also turned into a cartoon. If not, it will be soon. Again, just watch it. How good is it? I watched it after I came home from New York Comic Con at the apartment I was staying at. Yep, all sorts of things to do in New York City, after, con especially during Comic Con. And I can go home and bet you. Oh, Ocean of the Lane. There it is. Oh, yeah, I got the Barnes and Noble. I got my employee discount on it. So it's not 150 bucks for that sign. It was only 120. <laughs> Yeah, life is good. All right, the next half. Yes, that's half. We're halfway done. We're doing pretty good on time. Another auction grab. Starship, the Enterprise, Star Trek, the Enterprise Log. Originally, $1.95 each. I got these mostly. There's some other stuff in here. Well, let's pull it out. They're still in bags, but I'll show it to you anyway. Star Trek fans. Should know of the gold key Star Trek comics in the 60s. Notorious because the artist had very little photo reference. So, in some comics, you see exhaust coming out of the cells, all sorts of other things. Oh, rotting newsprint, gotta love it. So, but what these, what gold, gold key, Western, Dell, whatever they were called at the time, did, one of the things they did is they would repackage reprint uh, the comics into paperbacks. Very unusual at the time. This is 76. Oh, it has an ISBN, guys. Wow. 03071111857 from comics. It's copyright 70, 69, 68, 67 Paramount Pictures. Western Publishing Company. I don't know what issues these are. But again, the typical, your typical drama comic from Gold Key. Realistic drawing, straightforward, a lot of writing in there. Jeez. Um, things got better. Still not a lot of aliens. Oh, there's a good shot of the Enterprise. And speed lines instead of exhaust. That's fine. I can, I can deal with speed lines. On a comic, show moments, you know. Yeah. So anyway, I don't know which volume this is. No, this is the original issues, one through eight. Yep, there it is. There's the Voodoo Planet, which I wrote about in my blog. I might include a link in the description later. And of course, almost every single one of these comic books has a photo cover. But that's how I did back in the day. So here we have 9 through 17. I think at this time they were 20 cents an issue. 18 through 26, 224 pages. 
27 through 35. Oh, that's a really good cover. Nice little paint job on the Enterprise. And then, oh yeah, here the other, this is what I was going to mention. Later, probably going around the same time. I think they discovered that if you printed these on white paper, the colors popped even more. But they didn't absorb into the deuce print like they did. Marvel has this trouble later with flexographic printing. You'll notice it in the mid 70s. Everything becomes like fluorescent. For Western Gold Key, it was Dynabrite comic. And as we see, 69 cents on a comic book was probably 25 cents at the time, maybe 30. This is 1978. Star Trek, the Psycho Crystals. 75, copyright 75, 76. And to give you an example, it's almost like a coloring book. Boom. A lot of flat color. Like green almost looks like it's a fourth color. And it was. I don't know what the technology was at the time. But yes, there's a second story in here called The Bomb in Time. So. If you want to buy one issue of a Star Trek comic from that period, go with the Dynabrites. They're kind of nice. They're magazine quality. Nice hardcover. Nice uh, heavy cardstock. The Evictor is the choice. I like the painted cover there. Okay. Oh, here's the bill. That lot cost me six titles. 36 bucks. Good thing. All right. My uh, strategy on most bidding is $100, especially for art, original art. I might go over a little, but usually it goes way past that, and I don't feel so bad because I was like, oh, I was bidding 100 and I sold for 500 So uh, usually 100 bucks on items. Um, And maybe I'll bid a little higher, depending on how it goes. If it's a slow bid and somebody's up there, then yeah, I'm going to get a little competitive. Maybe go to 150 depending on the item. But this, I might have a problem. This $36 is probably too much. Not one of those sought after items. <clears throat> Even Trek fans don't like it. Most of this has been, most of this was reprinted by, I think, Checker back in the day. And then. If you can find it, there's a DVD ROM of almost the complete collection of Star Trek up to that period. So you got the gold keys. I think they're the, the, the deuce print scans, not the dying rights. You've got the Marvel, you've got the DC, you've got the Wildstorm, you've got IDW, you've got Paramount Comics. You can forget that. Well, I think the X-Men Comics there. I don't know. Probably not. Okay, now back to books. Adventures in Cartooning, great how to draw a book, also tells a story. I think there's four, maybe four or five books in this series now. It's been a while since I've seen one. Here is Adventures in Cartooning Christmas Special. Here we go. Do you think Santa changes his suit as he flies around the world? Or does he like just have this aura that maintains his body temperature so he doesn't swelter when he's down like it's so low? Oh, yes. Dave Gibbons, Will Simpson. 2008 presents War Machine. Very nice. 2008 D. By Simon Schuster. He's printing a lot of nice collections. Uh, this is $18. Okay. Uh, on a Judge Dread, um, I recommend the Future Shocks because those were short stories they did, one shots, but by soon to be famous creators. You know, Game has all much in there. Some Alan Moore. What do I got here? The Super Annuated Man, Tim McKeever. Image. Tim McKeever is just one of those guys that's, you know, I don't know what, you're, what to expect, which is the unexpected. 
I think he's like vertigo, but three times past that. The Gifted, books one and two by CME Originals. So cmecomics.com. 978 one nine three nine four two four one two nine. I always mention that because it is small press. You go far. Not a lot of story. Uh, what else we got here? Ooh, the Empire Strikes Back hardcover, episode five. Billy D. Williams is the intro. This, of course, is a Marvel twenty-five dollar hardcover. Is this this the? Uh, I believe this is just a revamping. Yep, Archie Goodwin, no one is saying Carlos Garzon. Soto Color, I think we colored it. Archie Goodwin editor, Joe Duffy, Danny Fingeroff editor, assistant editors. But nicely colored. I don't think the original comic was that rich. Looks nice. It's almost like something you would see in uh, heavy metal from that period. What do we got here? Oh, Batman Year 100 and Other Tales. Lux Edition, Paul Pope. Good stuff. $30. Really? Oh. Look at that, Batman. Forget Dark Knight Returns, man. This is how you do a geriatric Batman. At least that's what I've heard. Scout. Oh, good series. Surprised that hasn't been adapted into a TV series. Deluxe Edition Book 2, Jason Aaron, Iron Guerra. Life on the Res. Rosebud? Right here, Rosebud. Prairie Rose Indian Reservation. So, yeah, but you know what I mean. South Dakota. Hard Crime. Prime, what's, what's the French word for brown? I don't know. Ooh, more true crime, not true crime. Hard-boiled crime noir. Fatal, Brubaker, and Philippe Phillips. Image, 50 bucks. Sure, of course. Volume 2 of the Deluxe Edition. It's in wrap. A lot of these I haven't uh, taken out. Some of very red, like Swamp Thing, Scott Snyder, Deluxe Edition, the New 52 version. Yep, Paquette. Yannick Paquette. Um, this is Swamp Thing 0 through 18, Animal Man 12 and 17, Swamp Thing Annual number one. This is where I think they fight the rot, the grays. I will say this. Again, I was on the comp DC comp list at the beginning of the New 52. What he did with Swamp Thing was pretty good. Reimagined Swamp Thing and Animal Man together. And they added some other new kingdoms to the uh, politics. And then they had to find a new avatar where he was under... Swamp Thing was under review. So they said, hey, it's time for a new avatar. So they have to go to the Council of Parliament of Trees. And there's politics in there, which is pretty good. Another volume of Scalp. This is book three. Good period of uh, Vertigo. They weren't selling huge amounts of books. But high quality, very good quality. This was when Fables was her top seller. But you had Scalped. You had DMZ, which would also be a TV show, especially in this day and age. You have Unwritten, very meta, but very good read. Uh, you had Sweet Tooth, I think it was called. Uh... Even the John Constantine wasn't too bad at that period. I mean, it was what it is, what it is. Uh, so, yeah, good stuff. This is the 2000s. Again, New 52 era. And Superman Unchained. 30 bucks. It's 
Scott Snyder going to Superman, huh? Jim Lee Scott ones, yep. I probably read this and then completely forgot about it. This is pre New 52, I think. Yeah, yeah, 2014, I think. 2014. Oh, I don't know. No, it's New 52. What issues were this? Oh, I asked this. I know. I probably read it though when I got the copies. No, it was his own unique mini series. Huh. Okay. I'll let history judge that. And at the bottom, wow, here's a classic. Arc of Asylum. I believe I have that original hardcover somewhere. Matt Morrison, Dave McKean. Both of them were still avant-garde creators. Grant Morrison writing Batman would have been mind-blowing. Kind of like, yeah, Alan Moore writing Superman. Uh, this is probably just a few years after Dark Knight Returns. Late 80s. 20th anniversary here, $30. One of those perennial titles. It will always get reprinted. Update. Uh, fully painted by Dave McKean. A 16-page gallery of back matter. And that, my friends, is that. Uh, 35 minutes. See, there's. You gotta step back a little. I'll show you how big it is. These are kind of standard from Scholastic. They're bigger boxes. They use smaller ones too, which I have a few of. Uh, but again, we would get these at the office. They would ship the book buyers and kids, which are just down the hall from us. Their upcoming titles or newly released titles. There's titles just fresh off the boat. Uh, from China, and uh, what would happen? Well, first of all, we'd have the boxes lying around. What else would happen is that oh, I think it probably have one to six months after that shipment, the buyers would clean out their offices, toss all these review copies into a big yellow laundry bin, and then I would periodically go through and excavate that. Yeah. Digging through it all the way to the bottom, usually. Stacking, restacking stuff. Finding the occasional kids' graphic novel, picture book. Stuff my nieces and nephews would enjoy. Stuff my own collection. And, uh, and then the rest of this is stuff from our graphic novel buyer. So, that he didn't want in his collection. So, aside from the auction stuff, most of this are free. Books. And good stuff too, really. I mean, if a comic's in a hardcover, it's not going to be that crappy. Although, again, as I said, Superman Chain, all the history judge that. Um, so, Good stuff, Maynard. Probably oh, should help. Right. So, oh yeah, that goes next to that. I should just put that in the box. Oh wait, I should probably stop this, right? Yeah, sorry guys. This thing's still on. Yeah. Um, so again, yeah, thanks for watching. Comments. I know you're not watching us live. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if there's anything you find that's interesting. Uh, in the comments, if you have trouble finding stuff that I mentioned that you want to buy, I'd be more than happy to use my web foo and library training to find you a link so that you can add it to your library. So that's that. Nice little a mixture of everything there. Kids books, picture books, comics, one limited edition book, stuff at auction. Yeah, not too bad. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for spending time with me, and I'll see you soon.